CataractCoach.com, Cataract Quiz. Why doesn't the IOL center? Hmm. The end of the case, you rotate the torque lens and the caps or axis shifts around. Let me show you the case here. Nuke is already out. There's a good looking Rexus. Here comes Cortex Remove, a little sub incisional Cortex, which we can get out later, but it seems like a pretty routine case. You've got some torque marks on the corner for torque IOL. Well. But what's going to happen here? Now, while we get ready for that, let me tell you about RetinaRounds.com, our sister channel. It is amazing. Even if you're just like me, a cataract or anterior segment surgeon, there is so much great material that you will certainly learn and appreciate. It'll make you a better doctor. Check it out. Now, here's surgeons going in. Okay, sub-incisional, grabbing that with a cannula. That's a nice way of doing it, or loosening it up. And now let's take a look, slightly enlarging the incision. Okay, that's reasonable in order to get the lens in. Now, the incision looks a little long for me, but it's tolerable. Here comes the eye well being delivered in the capsule bag. Obviously, video sped up here a little bit. There it goes. Nicely done. Now, watch carefully. You put the eye on the bag. Yeah, we know the little sub-incisional cortex. We'll get that out. And now you've got to rotate this lens. And so the surgeon's going to go in with the IA probe. Here comes the IA probe. Now, I like to use the IA probe for infusion and then use the chopper or second instrument to rotate the lens. But surgeon's going to push on the lens with the IA probe. Watch carefully. So you can rotate it that way too. So sort of slowly rotating it, trying to get it to rotate in the correct orientation. Not quite getting there. So maybe push on it a little bit. And what happened? Do you notice anything? You're trying to rotate the lens by pushing on it. Just with the IA probe. Okay, it's kind of getting to the right orientation. Almost, I mean, maybe. Maybe it's two clock hours away. It's 60 degrees away. So you need to get it rotated better. But as you push on it, and you push on it, and you push on it, what happens? You're putting too much stress on the bag. You're breaking zonular support here. So watch carefully. The surgeon tries to rotate it, still not going enough, not achieving much, because the zonular support is being broken here. You're not holding the lens into position. Oh, boy. So here's where you want to just be much more gentle. Use the eye probe as infusion, and use your second instrument to delicately rotate the eye well. The big forceful movements. Now look, oh my gosh, you got Zion or loss there. You may have some vitreous prolapse. Look at that bottom left corner of your screen here. I know it's a little bit off the screen. That there you go. That's the capsular bag equator. That big clear zone is no zonular support at all. So viscoelastic is a good idea. Push that back. Hopefully the anterior hyaloid face intact. Hopefully there's no vitreous prolapse. What would you do now? Think about it. What are you gonna do now? Look how the rexus has shifted over and the IOL has shifted over. What are you going to do now? Yeah, I think you need to put a capsule tension ring in there. you got to address that area of weakness. So more viscoelastic, and including inflating the bag. Open up the bag. Get that bag wide open. And I think the key lesson here, the take-home point is, you can't just rotate the lens with the eye probe only, and, and you can't do that forceful downward pressure, that posterior pressure with it. You need to be able to use two hands inside the eye. That's why we have two incisions. That's why you have two hands. you got to use two hands to operate. So now at this point, let's put a capsule tension ring in. You still need to orient that lens. It's still off by at least a clock hour, 30, 40 degrees worth. And so it's time to put a CTR. And again, more viscoelastic is helpful to really expand the bag. You don't want to damage the bag as you're trying to place the CTR, right? Think about that. So let's go back inside the eye now. Get the eye, probe in the eye. But first, let's get the CTR in. Here comes the CTR. And let's see how the surgeon's going to implant it. You definitely want a CTR. you got to have these available. Now bring them. There's some HPMC hydroxypropyl about the cellulose on the cornea. Here comes the CTR. I can see it already. Getting it going inside the eye here. Again, I like to use that Sinsky hook. Yes, please, to get that leading eyelet and kind of catch it. Well, okay, maybe not. But just deliver it in. You're going to do this thing rotating around. Okay, advance it, advance it, advance it, advance it. Don't get it caught up on the eye well. And there you go. Now you've got the CTR in place. That's going to help. Still, again, you still have that focal area of zonular weakness, but that CTR should be enough to stabilize it. Now let's get this rotated. And now you're rotating it with viscoelastic in the eye, which is helpful, and also using a Sinsky hook. So again, it's getting close. You're still not quite there. You want to get that lined up. There we go. Now we're in the right neighborhood with the toric eye well. Woo, that is a tough case. So that take-home lesson is what? Don't be forceful on the zonular support. It's much weaker than we think. We need to be able to rotate the lens with two hands. I probe for infusion. Use the chopper or Sinsky hook in your non-dominant hand to rotate it to the correct position. Don't just shove it around with the IA probe. All right, check out retinarounds.com or Sister Channel. You know you're going to learn a lot. It's going to be so worth it. And one day, you'll thank me.